talked earlier about the issue of when to be compassionate to others, or when to show equanimity. But it's not really an issue of compassion versus equanimity. Goodwill, compassion, these are things that we should develop at all times with all beings. But the issue is the distinction between compassion and generosity. You can have compassion for all beings, but you can't be generous with everybody. Your time, your money, your energy, these things are limited. And so as you try to decide whom to help, how much help to give, think of what the Buddha had to say about generosity, because that's the framework for understanding that. And one of the most important things is that when you give, you don't want to harm yourself or harm the other person or harm anybody else. If you're giving to the point where your own energy is beginning to get drained, okay, that's not appropriate generosity. If you're giving in a way that's teaching the other person to be lazy and irresponsible, that's not good generosity either. So always keep in mind the fact that you have your limitations, and then try to parcel out the energy you have, the time you have, the knowledge, and the material things you have to see that they're put to the best use. Now your energy is something that you can add to. To the practice. Like this is one of the main purposes of developing concentration, is it gives you more energy. It's like food for the mind. This is why we say that practicing meditation is a gift, not only to yourself, but to others. Because if you find that you have more energy, at the very least it's easier to be more forgiving, it's easier to be less of a burden to others. Then you find that you can actually have the strength to take on some of their burdens. Because it's the strength of concentration, the strength that comes from the meditation, that makes you less of a victim of the situation around you. Because you begin to see where you're adding unnecessary weight to your own mind, unnecessary burdens that you're carrying around. The phrase they have in Thai. Thailand is about a, an old woman who's carrying straw. She knows that someday she's going to need some straw, so she has this big straw bale that she carries around in her back all the time. And as a result, she can't carry anything else of more value. So she's weighed down, can't carry the things that she herself needs, can't carry anybody else's burdens, because she's got this huge bale of straw. So you've got to look at where you're carrying your bale of straw around. If you find that your goodness depends on situations around you, it's a sign that you're weighing yourself down unnecessarily. You've got burdensome thoughts, burdensome attitudes. That's already weighing down the mind. And then when someone else says something that you don't like, you feel like you're being oppressed. Well, part of the human world is that people are going to say a lot of things you don't like. It's one of the reflections that the Buddha has you think about on a regular basis. The fact that you've got an ear means that you're going to hear unpleasant speech. The fact that you're a human being means there's going to be Unkind words said, words that are not timely, words that are not well-intentioned. There's a long list of good and bad kind of words you're going to hear, so you have to expect that you're going to hear both. 
But if you find that your goodness depends only on hearing nice words and only being around nice people, you've got to turn around and look at your goodness again. Where are you weighing yourself down unnecessarily? Look first at how you breathe. I've seen people who are depressed, and the way they breathe is adding to the problem. They breathe in ways that feel burdensome, feel heavy. It's just a struggle sometimes to breathe. It's one way you can have more energy for helping other people, or at the very least being good to other people in, in situations where they're not good to you. Learn how to breathe in a way that feels good and energizing. As for the unpleasant things that get done and said around you, learn to reflect. This is the human realm. You're not the only one who's being burdened by these things. You are the one who wanted to be born here. And this is what comes with this realm. Because there's going to be a mixture of good and bad karma that you've got, that you're going to be experiencing here. And if you find that when your bad karma comes back at you, and you respond in an unskillful way, that just puts you into a tailspin. So you've got to learn how to think that, okay, this is not unbearable. The fact that people say things, learn how to let it go right past. Don't think of it as an imposition on you. Don't think of it as being unfair. It may be unfair, but if you're going to go around asking for justice in this world, demanding justice in this world, trying to straighten out every situation, you're not going to have much energy left. For the sake of your own goodness, you've got to figure out how to cultivate a source of energy inside that's independent of your surroundings. So you can be in a pleasant, quiet place, and your mind is in good shape. You can be in an unpleasant place, and your mind can still be in good shape. That's what we're working on. This quality of bodily fabrication, working with the breath so it feels comfortable and nourishing, energizing. Verbal fabrication, how to think about things in a way that's more energizing. In other words, when things are difficult, think of it as an opportunity. Here is your opportunity to show your stuff, that you can be skillful in spite of the fact that there are unskillful people around you. Don't keep thinking of yourself as a victim, because you start turning into a scorpion. You know, scorpions, when they can't sting other animals, they start stinging themselves. You want to see where your thoughts are stinging you. And learn how to counteract them. Think in the opposite way. Think in a way that gives you energy, that puts you up for the challenge. And then their feelings and perceptions. These are verbal fabrication. You can try to cultivate feelings of well-being in the body. Learn to have an attitude of gratitude for the people who have been helping you, so that you want to show that the help they gave you was well given, wisely given. You're going to make good use of it. And then the perceptions that you've, as I said, you've got this opportunity to do good, even in difficult situations. You're writing the story of your life. And if the narrative is, okay, they did horrible things to me and I just couldn't help but do horrible things back, you're going to be blaming other people for your unskillful behavior. That doesn't go anywhere. If the narrative of your life is, okay, things were difficult, but I was able to overcome those difficulties, that's the narrative you want to write. So look at ways, the ways in which you're weighing yourself down unnecessarily. 
because those are the things that are putting a limitation on the amount of generosity you can have as you do with other people, the extent to which you actually can express your compassion for others. Because the attitude of mind which feels like a victim all the time, it's a very narrow attitude. We talk about that image where the Buddha says it's a cup of water in which someone throws a large lump of salt. If your mind is always thinking about how much you've been the burden excuse me, you've been burdened by things, you've been victimized by things. You're making your mind a little tiny cup of water, and there's not much water even in the bottom of even of a little cup. And then when some salt gets thrown in, you, don't, you can't drink the water. You've got to develop thoughts of goodwill every day, make them unlimited, and make them not just kind of vague. And flowery. You have to think about, are there people out there that I have ill will for? And remind yourself, ill will doesn't accomplish anything, no matter how much you've been mistreated. Goodwill means that you wish that everyone would understand the causes for true happiness and would act on them, so that everybody could find true happiness. The world would be a much better place that way. There's no need to go over old injuries. Because again, you're weighing yourself down with that kind of thinking. So look at ways in which you're placing a limitation on the possibility of your generosity. Placing a limitation on the possibility of giving expression to your thoughts of goodwill and compassion. Because that's where the limitations are coming from. They're coming from within. I mean, you can learn to let go of those bales of straw. You find you're in a much better position. It's a much better world. And with the people around you change or not, your attitude changes, and that's the world that matters. And your opportunity is always to do the skillful thing. You've got more energy now to do the skillful thing. That's how you break through these limitations. So let your compassion be unlimited. And look at ways in which you're placing limitations on your own generosity. Because even though your generosity cannot be totally unlimited, you can expand the range. And that makes a huge difference in your life. 